Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the Khilafahs of before, special importance was always given to two types of people, the Mujahideen and the Ulama. And this was unchanged regardless of whom the ruler was, as long as he was a Muslim from the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And so we find, in the time of the Khilafat al Uthmaniyya, the Ottoman Empire as many people know it, that the same held true. And thus we have someone of the caliber of Imam Ibn Kamal Pasha Rahimahullah. His full name was Shamsuddin Ahmad Ibn Sulaiman Ibn Kamal Pasha Rahimahullah. In Turkish, he was known as Kamal Pasha Zade, which is the Turkish equivalent of Ibn Kamal Pasha, meaning the son of Kamal Pasha. His grandfather was actually Kamal Pasha, not his father, but he was attributed to his grandfather, as is quite common when one has an ancestor of note. Imam Ibn Kamal Rahimahullah came from a lineage where special importance was given to both sides of his family. From his father's side, everyone was part of the army of the Ottoman Empire, while from his mother's side, they came from a background of ulama, so he had the best of both worlds. Imam Ibn Kamal Rahimahullah was born in the year 873 after Hijrah in the town of Tokat in northeastern Turkey. According to historians, Imam Ibn Kamal had started by joining the army of the Khilafah to become a soldier, but Allah had other plans for him. The Turkish army were very conscious about rank, so a regular soldier couldn't sit on equal seating to a commander, much less walk ahead of him or anything of that sort. So while they were returning one day from a military com- campaign, he saw an old man dressed in simple clothing enter the gathering, and he sat down on a higher seat to the commanders. And this greatly intrigued the young Imam Ibn Kamal, who was this man that was accorded so much respect. Upon inquiry, he was informed that it was Mullah Lutfi, the Imam of the Darul Harith in Idirne, and told that he was afforded such great respect as a result of the knowledge of the deen that he had. So just from that one interaction, Imam Ibn Kamal rahimahullah, was drawn in by the personality of Mullah Lutfi rahimahullah, and he decided to take the road of knowledge as well. Imam Ibn Kamal rahimahullah, studied under Mullah Lutfi, under Imam Khatib Zadeh and many others and was immediately recognized for his brightness. So right after he had completed his studies, he was appointed as a teacher in one of the madrasas in Idirne and at the same time he began writing books as well. Imam Ibn Kamal Pasha rahimahullah, was an erudite scholar, a prolific writer, and a polyglot as well. He had authored many books. Over 200 books are confirmed as a bare minimum, with some ulama saying that he had actually authored over 300 books. The vast majority of the books written by Imam Ibn Kamal rahimahullah, was in Arabic, because that was and is the language of Islam. But he also wrote some in Turkish and Farsi because Farsi at that time was the second most used language of Muslims, and Turkish because the Khilafah was Turkish, so there were many people that spoke the language. About seven books were written in Farsi, and about 19 in Turkish, and everything else, all the hundreds, were all in Arabic. A point of note is that most of the work was done in Arabic. He didn't say that, well, I am a Turk, the Khilafah is Turkish, we are in Turkey, so let's have our own Turkish brand of Islam or anything of the sort. They were people whose culture was dictated by Islam, unlike today where people want to dictate Islam and the Sharia on the basis of their culture. Imam Ibn Kamal Pasha rahimahullah, rose in stature and was appointed as the Qadi of the army in Anatolia. At this stage in life, Imam Ibn Kamal had both a background in the army as well as in the deen, and he was not afraid to stand up for the truth. At the time, the Safawid Shia were on the rise, so Imam Ibn Kamal rahimahullah, wrote to the Khalifa to send an army against the Shia to quell them before they get a chance to spread. Apart from them, Imam Ibn Kamal Pasha was very strict on deviants and groups of kufr that attributed themselves to Islam, and he had in fact given a fatwa regarding the Shia and their likes that they may not be married by a Muslim, nor can their meat be eaten, they must not be allowed to enter the masajid or be buried in the graveyard of the Muslims. Imam Ibn Kamal rahimahullah, didn't only just encourage jihad, he also joined the army and took part in the battles himself too. 
Once in, one incident is reported that one day upon the return from an expedition, the horse of Imam Ibn Kamal sprayed mud over the cloak of the Sultan. The people were fearful thinking that he would have been greatly angered by it. But instead, the Sultan, Salim, he said that the mud of an alim on his clothing is actually something, something to be proud over. So he asked that this cloak be kept for the day that he passes away. And so after he passed away, that cloak was draped over his grave. Such was the high esteem that Imam Ibn Kamal Pasha rahimahullah, held in the eyes of everyone, the Sultan included. In fact, he was known as the most knowledgeable alim of the Uthmani Khilafah. So he was bestowed two titles. The first is Shaykhul Islam, a title that we know is not and never was ever used lightly. This title was given to him during the reign of Sulaiman Qanuni, also known as Sulaiman the Magnificent. It was more than just a title though. It was an official position that he was appointed to and he remained as such until the day that he passed away. And the second title was Mufti Yuthaqalain, which translates as the Mufti for both man and jinn. This was not to say that he claimed to sit and teach jinns and stuff of that sort. No, rather he was given this title because he was considered amongst the ulama to be on such a level that there wasn't a human or a jinn that had more knowledge than him thus making him the mufti of both. Imam Ibn Kamal rahimahullah, spent his entire life studying and teaching the deen and writing books and giving lectures as well as being the chief mufti and the qadi of the khilafah. He lived at the same time as Imam As-Suyuti rahimahullah, just at different points of the Islamic empire and the ulama have said that they have difficulty choosing who the greater and more knowledgeable alim was between the two, between Imam al-Suyuti and Imam Ibn Kamal Pasha, rahimahum Allah. And when he passed away, it was said that knowledge left the world with Imam Ibn Kamal, to say that you will not be able to get someone like him again. Such was his lofty rank. May Allah give us the ability to appreciate all of the ulama and the work that they have done for the deen. That today everything is so easy for us. Everything is preserved and explained. We are not left in the dark about anything, nor do we need to reinvent the wheel. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.